All right, it's time to go back to Phoenix. We have another UFO event there. Not as big as the famous Phoenix Lights, of course, but uh, on the spot helping us keep tabs of things is uh, one of the nation's premier UFO researchers when it comes especially to photographing and doing photo analysis. He is Tom King. Hello, Tom. Are you there? Yes, I am. Thanks for having me, Jeff. Oh, it's nice to talk to you again. Welcome back. Well, it's happy to be back. Lots going on. All right. Uh, this is a wild one, and for those of you on the net, certainly go to the guest section at the top of my homepage. Click on Tom King's name below that, the photo link, and you'll you'll see some uh, some frames. First of all, Tom, when did this this one start appearing? What was the first date of uh, observation, as far as you know? Um, as far as I can tr- trace this back was June 9th and 10th. Um, all right, so it's been around... Object- uh, appeared on mm-hmm. two nights in a row. Two in, two in a row, early yeah. June. Yeah, we, uh, a friend of mine who's a sky watcher, Jeff Willis, informed me of a red object right in my uh, neighborhood over here where I live. <laughs> so uh, I was aware of it, and I was pulling into my driveway on the 12th of July uh-huh. when I seen this object that I thought might be the red one. And I looked at it for a minute and thought, well, that's not an aircraft. I better check this out and uh, grab the camera and... It all started from there. What did it look like on June 9th and 10th, and what does it look like now? The same? Are we well, looking at the, the June, same thing? The June 9th and 10th, I wasn't a witness to. I was, we were referring to reports on Peter Davenport's website. Right, right. Uh, first time I saw this object was on July 12th at about 819. But all reports seem to be homogeneous. It's the same thing. Yeah, it's pretty much the same thing, but a slightly different show every night. Um, Where is it appearing in relation to Phoenix? Okay, I live in Chandler, Arizona, and it's directly east and slightly north, and it appears in this area of the sky usually right around 8 o'clock or sometimes before it's completely dark. Hmm. Same, Um, Same place every night? Pretty much the same area around the same altitude. And uh, it's very visible. It's it's hard to mistake. If you watch it with the naked eye for a couple of minutes, mm-hmm. you'll, you'll just be going, wow, what is this thing? This isn't aircraft, helicopters, mm-hmm. or anything. This is something right over the East Valley of uh, Phoenix. Can anybody drive under it? Has anyone tried to get under it? Do you have witnesses on both sides of it that can look up and triangulate it or at least give you a couple of different angles? Well, most of the people that I've spoke with so far live in the Chandler, Gilbert, and Tempe area, and most of us are looking east. I'm following up some reports of people who are farther north in the valley who are mm-hmm. reporting that they've seen it south. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So we're working on the exact triangulation, and we're going to be using a GPS system pretty soon because we have so much data and eyewitnesses um, that we can figure out where this object is, how, not where it's at. That's interesting. How are, how are you going to use GPS to actually locate this object? That's Well, you take a GPS system and you take a position of each witness's home. Okay. Then you take a, um, a tool that I have, I happen to have laying around, that they use in construction that will give you the elevation and the angle they were looking at. Mm-hmm. So then you take the GPS system, go about 50 feet away, and have them say, I was looking exactly in this direction, Mm -hmm. and you take a mark there, draw a straight line on a map, do this to several locations, then you take uh, the inclination of uh, the azimuth of uh, how high it is in the air, Mm -hmm. and you send it to somebody who knows a lot about trigonometry, and they'll do the work. (laughs) I'm not into trigonometry, I'm more into computers, programming, and Sky watching and such, but right, I'm right. going to collect the data and turn it over to some experts who handle that area. All right. Now, this this visitor, or whatever it is, has been given a name. It's, this has a name, folks. It's called, well, what you tell us, Tom. I, I named it Bubba the first time I saw it because I'm familiar with the Bruce Morrison footage and other footage from Gulf Breeze, Florida in 91. Uh huh. And this seems to be the spitting image of that object. And I figured if this is Bubba, Bubble will probably launch or eject objects out of the top or the bottom, huh. because you see that quite a bit in the Gulf Breeze videos. Uh-huh. The next night, I seen it on July 13th. I captured on video it shooting an object out of the top very faintly. Huh? A little, what? Just a little white light or a little light object? Yeah, just a small little light that you. Mm-hmm. I don't think anybody on the ground seen it because I was filming with the telephoto lens on mm-hmm. around 80 power and it. Barely picked it up on video, but you can mm-hmm. see it in the clips I uh, posted. 
All right, what's your guess on the, the configuration of this? Is it a sphere? Is it uh, a flatter object, an elliptical object? Do you have a, can you see it well enough with the naked eye to, to see a definite shape to it, or are you just seeing colors flash? Well, that depends upon which eyewitness and how close they are to it. From mm-hmm. my position and most people's position, it appears to be a red ball of light that's pulsing in the sky. Now, Rhythmically? It, yeah, pulsing on and off, but sometimes it'll just shut off red and go white. Now, this would be similar to the light you would see on the top of a radio tower, Mm -hmm. but this thing's around 15,000 feet in the air and sometimes moves up to approximately 30, and it's moving. I mean, you could, people see it, this thing is moving in the sky, and it's been seen shooting around quite rapidly. Um, Another reason I compare this with Bubba from the Golf Breeze days is if you watch the tapes, Bubba usually appeared between 7.30 to around 8.45. Mm -hmm. That's about the zone where this is in. This is usually showing up around 8 o'clock to about 8.45 in the East Valley, and it has been seen a couple of times on the other side of town, usually around 9 to 10. Huh. So it likes to come right at dusk and hang out. Yeah, and when it shows up, it doesn't seem to care who sees it or what it does. Uh Um, I live in an area of town where the planes circle around and they land at Sky Harbor. Mm -hmm. There's planes... uh, flying around this left and right, and if the pilots can't see it, they got to be blind, because the people looking out of the window must be seeing a real sight. Okay, so there, there, there are aircraft flying. I was going to ask, that was my next question, and they have to be seeing it. Oh, of course. Um, yeah. On July 12th alone, there were five aircraft on my video that circled and probably got within five miles of the thing. Any evidence of the aircraft making efforts to get nearer to it? Or just passing by it? Or did well, anybody circle around it? Last night, um, when the object shot off on, on that video, 15 minutes later when I was on the roof still looking for it, I seen uh, a helicopter patrol the area real quick and then mm-hmm. take off. And later I called the Apache Junction Police Department, it's where I believe this object is over around Apache Junction mm-hmm. in Florence. Um, they claim they don't know anything about it, but they went through my website and were amazed and and uh, hmm. that this is real. They've seen the reports, they've mm-hmm. seen the videos, mm-hmm. and they realize that this is a real event happening over their city, mm-hmm. and they want to see it themselves. So hmm. hopefully the uh, Apache Junction Police Department uh, is looking for this now. All right. Has anyone called the obvious, the FAA, or any radar operators? I have. And what What do you hear? I called them on the 14th of July. I talked with the FAA, or not the FAA. I, ca- I took, called the, the Phoenix uh, Air Traffic Control Tower, took me a while, but I finally got mm-hmm. through, mm-hmm. and I asked the tower people, are you seeing this? They didn't know what I was talking about, and I said, well, you had to have seen this. This is just so obvious in the sky. This thing doesn't belong, and it's moving around weird, and when I told them, hey, this could be a collision situation, it's you sure. know. It's a hazard, possibly. Yeah, um, so I said, look, I want your tower communications from the ground to the air, air traffic. I, I want to see if the pilot said anything. All of a sudden, I got put on hold and transferred to upper management because whoever I talked to could not shake me away, mm-hmm. and they wanted somebody with more experience to get rid of me. And this guy was the assistant manager of mm-hmm. the, the tower. He talked mm-hmm. to the supervisor, said none of the pilots reported anything. <laughs> Apparently, from what I, I just got back from a MUFON meeting 15 minutes ago where I showed yeah. all this footage, yeah, yeah. or most of it, publicly. Uh-huh. Now, from last night's sighting, there was a pilot, according to... Bob, the uh, state director of MUFON here, who spoke with him. Mm-hmm. This guy is a pilot, and he was on the ground, and he seen the sighting last night. He saw the object. Okay. He saw the object, and he said that he knows the the where the planes turn around for their approach by heart. He's done it thousands of times. Yeah. Last night, he said these guys were diverted, and this was not normal. <laughs> he believes this pilot that they redirected the air traffic to stay Mm -hmm. away from this object. Mm -hmm. According to the state director of MUFON, this would mean that the FAA knew about it and possibly had it on radar or some kind of visual tracking. Oh, yeah. If if there's hardware up there, obviously it has to be noticed. I mean, you've got, as you said, air traffic all over the place. Sky Sky Harbor is a very busy little airport. Well, if I've talked to some... Sky watchers, and I figured that if this thing keeps showing up over and over, yeah. 
um, I'm going to rent a helicopter, an aircraft, <laughs> go up with the video cameras and tell the pilot, there's the thing, go as close as you can before go get the it. electronics go out. That's yeah, right. yeah, yeah. You might want to do that in advance, uh, try and set something up. There's a lot of helicopter services over there, I'm sure. Oh, yeah, there's, and they're not as expensive as people think. Well, they might even want to do it for fun. You might get somebody who's interested in the whole thing. So. I'm looking for somebody who wants to go up with me for fun, but if I have to, I'm willing to shell out the money because... It's showing up every six, about once every six days, sometimes a couple of days in a row. So it's hit yeah. and miss. I might get lucky and get. How it. how long each sighting, Tom? They vary between fifteen minutes to thirty-five minutes. Plenty of time to get up there. Oh yeah, plenty. Well, the, the goal is to be in the air at eight o'clock. So if it shows up, you got plenty of time to hit to go after it because the object sometimes hovers, and when it does move, it moves around a hundred miles an hour, I think, mm-hmm. except for when it just darts off. What now, is the closest level to the ground that it has been observed uh, at? How close has it come to the ground? Um, apparently, according to one witness from July 12th I spoke to on the phone, about 100 feet. It's been seen down that low? Yeah, this this guy, I'll just say his first name, it's Craig. Okay. He, see, he was in his pool on July 12th, mm-hmm. and he turned around and he seen a red, dish-shaped object about a mile away from him, but he was looking right through the treetops. Mm-hmm. He said that the object was so bright he could not look directly at it, which is what we're shooting on tape, same type of object. He freaked out. He started screaming. This guy's a normal man, doesn't He's, believe in UFOs. And he, he did see a disc-shaped object. He, he said it was the outline of a disc, but he couldn't see any details inside uh-huh. of it because of the blinding red uh, emanating from the object. Oh. Um, he, he, he was about to call the fire department, apparently, because he thought he was going to set some trees on fire. He believes the object was uh, as long as anywhere from two to three semis. So he calls 911. So we're working on getting a 911 tape, which I've already started on. It shouldn't take me too long to have the uh, the actual audio tape. Uh-huh. So he calls his mother, or uh, I believe, uh, excuse me, his sister. His uh-huh. sister goes out and videotapes the object huh. after he's seen it. But by then, when he was on the phone with 911, screaming to them, and they were trying to calm him down... The object, he said, shot straight up into the air and disappeared within a second or two. And he describes it shooting up like a bullet. Wow, all Then right. he called his mom. His mom went outside, seen it, and started videotaping the Everybody's object seen 15,000 feet. Hold on, Tom. We'll take a break and come right back. King over there in uh, Chandler, Arizona, which is uh, not too far from Phoenix. We've got a UFO that's been appearing regularly since early June. It is uh, apparently being seen by a lot of people. How many people at the meeting had seen it, Tom? Uh, I'd say maybe one out of ten. Uh, I had to get out of there real quick to get home and talk to you tonight. But, right, uh, well, I appreciate that. There were people that. who were about under it over in Apache Junction, uh-huh. and they said it ended up around Florence which is just around south of Apache Junction, and they said that there were four jets that came up upon the object, and it just disappeared. As in just winked out? Yeah, that's similar to what we videotaped, or I videotaped, and other people had seen. What I seen on that night was the pulsing red object. Uh About 15,000 feet is what we're estimating, and... It slowly went up to around 30,000 feet, turned the red light off, and tried to mimic a star in the sky. <laughs> you couldn't see yeah. it unless you were filming on infrared. Uh-huh. 
Um, so that was one pattern. It shows up in the same area, but it does a different maneuver each time, or it looks optically different because I'm able to penetrate through the little white ball you see mm -hmm. with the naked eye mm -hmm. and shoot ten times um, farther than the naked eye can see optically with the camera before it hits digital zoom mode. Hmm. And on the 13th of July, the video, what you see on the video looks like the outline of a flying classic flying saucer or disc mm -hmm. tilted on its side. Mm -hmm. Now, the high-powered video I shot last night, um, it's hard to say. It looks kind of like a, a diamond-shaped craft, but with a black ball in the center. So it's similar to the Nellis object, okay. the, the Nellis video. But it also kind of looks like a saucer with a black dome, so we're I haven't had enough time to study the, the data to see what this may or might not be. Right, right. But th there's more people who are getting geared up buying more astronomy equipment, <laughs> and I'm getting teams of people together to try and videotape this, and I'll do the sky watching for them. Just have your camera ready. I'll call you. And let me know where you live, and when it shows up, we're going to go down a call right. list, and we're going to get as many people as possible to shoot this for better triangulation and better video. What we're looking at on these three freeze frames, grabs from the video, uh, for those of you who can't see it, is uh, kind of a charcoal, grainy, nightish sky, and in the middle is a, a, uh, a white object with a red sort of a smear around it. Close, looks like it's glowing red. And then the white object has it looks like a black dot in it almost. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty much what you see on tape. Uh, yeah. It's hard to tell. I did from the research I did do on Bubba from um, the Gulf Breeze sightings, is Bubba would sometimes be two or three objects close together like caviar, and it would deploy some of these objects, and that's how I think it ejected some as it was flying in a tight formation. Mm -hmm. But finally, we're getting some structure video at night with this thing. Thanks to new video cameras and zooms and technology they didn't have in 91. Right, right. Um, I believe this sighting is solvable. Uh, there's, if this shows up consistently, there's no reason why we cannot identify what this is, even if it's a flying saucer. I'm trying to get everybody motivated in town to go out and tape this, whether they have a high-powered camera, a telescope, or just the average consumer camera. Did, did the guy who, or the people who reported four jets... That we need to talk about a little bit more. Who, who saw these jets, and did you try to call a nearby air base and check and see if anything had been scrambled? Well, I called Luke Air Force Base on the 19th of this month because Jeff Willis seen the red object over west of town okay. around the Glendale area. Um, the object faded away when two F-16s started patrolling the area over Sun City. I called... Luke Air Force Base immediately and said, why did you deploy two objects over Sun City around 10 o'clock? Mm -hmm. The lady told me nothing was deployed, and I said, look, we have this on video, and you mm -hmm. can see the red from afterburners and mm -hmm. the strobe mm -hmm. lights. Mm -hmm. And they're, mm -hmm. they're flying tight. Commercial and, and private airplanes don't fly that close together mm -hmm. and swing around each other. Military and, does. And she said, what did she say? She never called me back, so I figure I'm probably under investigation for being an <laughs> unpatriotic citizen who didn't believe they're bull. <laughs> it's the same thing from the March 13th sighting. The military's yeah. only going to tell us enough to get us off the phone. They're not going to disclose right. the gun camera footage they're taping. Yeah. All right, be right back. With Tom King and talking about uh, Bubba, a UFO that has been hanging around Chandler and Apache Junction and... Uh, other points around, uh, well, Phoenix, the greater Phoenix urban area, I guess we could say. All right, Tom, so what do we have at this point? How many total sightings have there been to date, do you think? Do you have a, an accurate count of them? The ones I know about that were reported are five for this month. So the average is about once every six uh, days. That's, that's a lot of action for the same object coming back repeatedly. And apparently, if this fellow in his swimming pool wasn't drinking too much or something, that's a, a remarkable thing to see. Well, his brother's a physicist, and they come from a well-educated family. Uh -huh, He's a uh -huh. very credible person. Good. Well, I like to hear that kind of thing. Although it doesn't mean that if he were a truck driver, he wouldn't be a credible no, witness. No, that's correct. I mean, nothing wrong with truck drivers. In fact, truck drivers have given us some of our most astonishing UFO reports. The point is, uh, if the guy saw what he saw, that's an amazing dynamic to this sighting. If it's down that low. Yeah, it's, that it means goes a little it, 
Yeah, it goes a little beyond just some of the, the videos we're shooting. This thing, this thing's coming in low. Last night when it ditched me, I had it all set up to just nail this thing optically. <laughs> it did an 80-degree turn, mm -hmm. shot down, and accelerated its speed by three times. Everybody who's seen this video has said that if it's a pilot, they're going to break their neck trying this one. He went, the, the, the object went straight down? It, it didn't went go, straight down. It didn't go up. It accelerated down. Down at high speed, so I figured this thing's coming in really low tonight, and it, it dipped below the tree line, so I ran on the roof. Um, and couldn't see it anymore, but then mm -hmm. 10 minutes later, the helicopter comes to patrol the area. Do we have any idea what kind of helicopter, police helicopter, military? Uh, it's most likely police because typically the mm -hmm. news does not fly at night. Mm -hmm. I've mm -hmm. contacted the local news to get them to chase well, this. We've all done that, I think, over the years. The local news never responds. Well, they don't fly at night because news happens at 5 and 12 and 10. <laughs> And hey. <laughs> they said that it cost a thousand dollars an hour to keep the helicopter in the air right. for fuel and pay, yeah, so no, they're right. not going to go after it. No, no, of course not. I, I wonder if there would be some pilots who might have some trepidation about actually trying to close in on something like this. I hope so. This is uh, this is compounding every day. This is getting mm -hmm. more and more and more, and we're learning more about this. Interesting. And, what, what what about calling nine eleven and really pressing them next time and challenging them to send someone outside to look at this thing? It could be causing a hazard to aviation. There are planes all around it. What is it? I called 911 last night, and if anybody cares to pull the tape, pull it between 8.30 and 9. Um, they told me this was not a life-or-death situation. Well, In all fact, right. it took me four attempts to get a hold of 911 because it's busy. Um, <laughs> it's not life and death, so I need to call non-emergency police and was basically pawned off the phone, and I, th I thought, hey, maybe this is going to abduct somebody. It's shot right down towards the ground. And it's kind of characteristic of these other people who are reporting shooting straight up in the sky. Mm -hmm. So basically, all three videos I've shot, everybody who sat down and watched them has just said, wow, you watch the tape, it's shot on a tripod. Mm -hmm. You couldn't possibly shoot it better or with higher power well, no, unless you had military gear. You're a very accomplished videographer, I know. And they said the video speaks for itself. You, you can't explain each video and each one. It's doing radical man maneuvers like shooting out objects mm -hmm. or doing 90 degree turns. I mean, this is really exciting to to have this um, thing go on, and, and more and more people are getting involved with cameras. And because of this MUFON meeting, we're really going to pull together mm -hmm. in, in the town mm -hmm. where the last you know, major Phoenix Lights thing, we pulled apart because of the infighting, but now we're pulling back together. So right. we got investigators from all over the place working together on, on a sighting for once, and hopefully this will be an example of what people should do right. when we have the opportunity to, to document something like all that. All right. Well, any possible explanation that we're going to just do a little speculation now, what it might be if it's not? Uh, uh, well, I've came to two conclusions. All right. This is either military or this is ET, but it's not a hoax because it's pretty hard to get a hoax in the air at thirty thousand feet. It's pretty hard to get a hoax to do a, a, a well, the, heavy G eighty degree turn. Right. Oh, the acceleration, the the descent, the acceleration uh, sounds pretty wild. Yeah. Yeah. This will be on my website by Sunday afternoon. Okay. All right. Um, well, we've got the pictures up there now for people to see, uh, and your website is also linked to your name, which. Uh, is ufovideo.com. Tell us about the website while well, we've got you here, Tom. Well, I, the website went offline about a year ago because too many gigs were downloaded too fast. Mm -hmm. I put it back up about three months ago, and actually right now I'm on vacation because my little girl Brittany's staying with me, but she leaves tomorrow, and then I go back <laughs> into ufology. <laughs> oh, see, so believe it or not, I'm on vacation and doing this. Um, we're gonna have, we have a lot of videos sitting there waiting to put up online. Believe it or not, people ask me to put the videos Everybody who's shot video so far has told me, do what you want with the video, I don't care. So, we're going to be uploading a lot of other footage and um, a lot of other footage. A friend of mine has a video that's, that's shocking. I mean, it qualifies beyond smoking gun, but he said that the world is not ready to see this and he doesn't want to get into the media. Now, who, wait a so, minute. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. This is a friend of yours? Yeah, another Skywatcher of mine. Okay, and what do you... What now, certainly he must have taken you into his confidence a little bit and told you what he had. What oh, I know have? what he has, but 
I'm is trying it, to you, get him to release at least have, the yeah. still image from it. Have you seen it? He doesn't have the tape in his possession. He was what, afraid what? he was going to get killed over this. So he so, sent it to a relative, and now he wants the tape back. And I think I might be able to do something in a couple of months with it. But it's up, it's up to him. It's his video. And I don't blame him for, for not wanting to be the focus of web attacks and yeah, all right. and all this other stuff. But then again, there's he has a certain responsibility to show his footage. I would think. I mean, why hide it away? What's he going to do with it? Well, he said this is beyond any... This guy's a seasoned sky watcher. He said it's beyond what we normally see. Then he should put it up as soon as he possibly can. Well, Jeff, I've been working on him for over a year on this, and I'm getting close. But uh, He's been sitting on this for a year? Yeah. And it's that good? Well, yeah, it goes beyond close encounter. It's not with an alien. No, come on, it's not with a disc on. on the ground. But let's say this is one of those... Um, is this daylight? No, this is night foot... Night vision footage. All right, well, we have trouble with night footage now. You know that. We have lights in the black sky, and that's what we see. So. Yeah, but what if the night footage is a couple inches away from the person? Oh, I see. What if the person actually touched the object? Then you're getting into a sensitive area. I think he needs to bring that tape forward as quickly as he can. Maybe something like that will be what we need to kind of crack the eggshell of the big, the big scam, that, the cover-up. Well, it's not going to prove that there's saucers and the government has them. It's not going to prove the gray aliens are real. What it will prove is that these small <laughs> probe-like devices people see but seldom mm -hmm. get on tape was captured on tape. Mm -hmm. And it went up to an individual and it had a, some kind of quick relationship with them before it left. Oh, my. Well, so, if this is true and you trust the fellow... And he's, he's one, I trust this guy. This guy I've known for a long time. I not only investigated... His videos, mm -hmm. I started investigating him okay. to see if he was trying to pull something on me. Right. And after a year, I had to conclude that the guy's for real. All right. Let's see what happens. Hold on, Tom. We'll take a break and uh, be right back. I'm Jeff Rents. Glad you're here tonight. And uh, coming up on the weekend, tomorrow night, we have the best of two great shows beginning at 9 p.m. Pacific time, running until 3 a.m. Live on the net uh, around the world. We shall continue in just a couple of minutes. Okay, we're back uh, talking with Tom King in Arizona, where an ongoing series of UFO sightings has a lot of people talking, and apparently, possibly, the Air Force responding, and uh, who knows what else going on there. A helicopter did show up to take a look-see. It'll be interesting to see what happens, Tom, if it continues. Uh, it's almost as if it's daring you to do something. Well, I've determined whatever it is, it, uh, it wants to be photographed, because it's sitting in the sky for 30 minutes, and it's almost enough time to drive down the freeway and get under it. Mm -hmm. And since mm -hmm. it's occurring in the same place around the same time, I mean, that just all adds up to this don't care. It, it Photographic, fly up to it, whatever. I don't know what it is, but I've been talking with Peter Davenport, and when this thing hits Phoenix, sometimes it'll hit other states right after this or around the same now, time. Now, Peter, of course, is right on top of these things nationally at the National UFO Reporting Center. Is he telling you that there are similar reports of Bubba in other locations? Yeah, I believe he was talking last Tuesday when it was sighted. Um, okay. An hour later, it was sighted over San Diego. Same, similar object. Um, uh, July 13th, right about five minutes before it hit this area, it was seen flying in formation with about five to six of these red lights over Texas heading towards Arizona. It was also seen that night in New Jersey and New York. So either we have multiple craft like this, or we have one craft that's 
rapidly hitting a multitude of states. Yeah, Bubba gets around. I guess so. So hopefully there's <laughs> other states out there that are taping this and coordinating like I am. All right. Well, we will see. And, of course, for all of you regulars, you'll know that Peter Davenport is here each month on the second Tuesday. And uh, we'll be talking with Peter about this sighting and many others on August the 8th, to be exact. So that's coming up soon as well. Okay. All right. What's uh, what's your next step? Well, uh, we're teaming up. We're just a couple of steps behind from multiple documentation and possible aircraft intercepts by myself. So. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go, I'm going all out for this. I mean, this is, Call if I've seen yeah. anything, this is a UFO. Call your, okay, all right, well, it's a UFO, it's unidentified. Call your local helicopter flying services, see if you can talk to one of the owners there, or people in charge, and ask them if they have an interest in doing this. Tell them that uh, they will be noticed by everybody, you'll get some uh, good coverage and so forth. Maybe, maybe you'll get a free offer of help. If, if we get close enough, whoever flies this, their name will be famous. Uh, we want to go point. real. I want to go real close. Probably somebody without a wife and children would want to That's take this assignment. Exactly. It, <laughs> but uh, we're closing in on it, and uh, we got a lot of good stuff. If good. this is Bubba, and Bubba's following a pattern, then Bubba might be sticking around for a few months. All right. Okay, Tom. Keep me posted, will you? I will. Thanks very much for taking hey. time uh, and rushing home. Hey. I appreciate it. Thanks for uh, giving me the opportunity to let these people around Phoenix know. And now is the time to dust off your cameras and bring them out. All right. Give us a, a contact uh, number for you if you have one, or just you want them to go through the website only? They can go through the website at www.ufovideo.com, or okay. they can email me, ufohunteradhome.com. Okay, ufohunteradhome.com. All right, Tom, take care. All right, you have a good night, and we'll let you know if he's back. Thanks, Tom. Bye. Okay, good night. All right, so uh, things happening in the Phoenix area. I thought you'd like to hear about that. A lot of sightings, and we'll talk to Peter Davenport about that, of course. On the 8th, as I look ahead on the calendar, on August 1st, the first Tuesday of the month, George Filer will be here, his monthly report from Filer's Files, of course, which appear on my website every week, collated from people all around the country. Here's a story just in from uh, our friend Scott Corrales. This is an interesting one. Uh, villagers... Uh, and I can't pronounce the name, so I won't try. It's a small village in Poland, in Pomerania. Fear now that uh, UFOs, which allegedly visited the area just a few days ago, will cause them to pay an exorbitant electric bill. Farmers are convinced that the perfect circles discovered in a wheat field there adjoining the town are the marks left by 10 UFOs, which fed their engines on power drains from the high-tension wires which pass by the town. And we have heard over the years, of course, many, many stories about UFOs hanging about power installations, high-voltage lines, and so forth. Polish television stations actually showed images of the perfectly symmetrical circles, which we could call crop formations, I guess, within which wheat stalks are perfectly flattened in bunches spread out in a clockwise rotational manner. Many visitors to the site in that uh, area of Pomerania say now that... Uh, the creation of such circles by humans would have required a lot of time, very modern tools and logistics, which would have been impossible to hide from the region's inhabitants. So they would have seen it, heard it, and noticed it. Employees of the Torin Astronomical Observatory are far less romantic, however. They claim that the circles left in that wheat field in Poland were left behind by helicopters which landed in the fields. However, Elsbierta Sutrilis, the owner of the field in question, is disgusted by the event. Given that the thousands of people are visiting her property each day and not paying her for it, to see the strange circles, and she said, uh, naturally the flattened, they flattened all of the wheat that the cosmic visitors did not flatten out. The press has stated that barely a month ago, similar circles were discovered in the locale of, uh, I can't pronounce that one either, near the city of Rezzau, on the opposite end of Poland. So that uh, is a recurring event over there. A total of four crop circles were found at that one particular village, one of them having a diameter of seven meters, while the three remaining ones were somewhat smaller. Researchers of the mysterious circle state that they could have theoretically been created by powerful whirlwinds or downdrafts, but no reports of many tornadoes in the affected regions were made. So the Poles over there are worried that their electric bills are going to go up because of UFO visitation. Who knows? 
If you're new to the program, let me invite you once again to the website at uh, sightings.com or rents.com. They're for you 24 hours a day. We've got stories going up in our headline section, which we like to think of as uh, probably the most unique news service on the planet. 11,000 total stories now archived in data pages. And not a week goes by when someone does an email and say, uh, Jeff, where did that story go? So be sure you scroll down, please, to the bottom of the page and take a look at the data pages because that's where you'll find all the stories when they leave our headlines. And, of course, I'm trying to get to my website now, but I'm having another block on the Internet. Thank you very much. Hmm, no go. Frustrating, isn't it? And by the way, if you are interested in these programs, do remember that they are available on audio cassette as well as in our archives, which go all the way back to 1997. Looking ahead for you, uh, just a quick reminder, uh, next week is a busy week. We've got George Filer on Tuesday. Uh, a gentleman will be along with him, Dennis Pacula, who has written a very interesting book about the cosmology of God as it relates to the universe. A new view on that. Uh, MUFON report on Thursday night. Incoming international director John Schusler is now installed, and he'll be uh, lining up some more people. In fact, I think John may be on the, on the guest list himself next week. And then a return visit, and I'm glad to uh, tell you that Dr. Nick Begich will be back on Sunday, August the 6th. Uh, Nick has done a marvelous job putting together all the data, the latest data, on the threat that cell phones pose to all of us, and you've got to read this. In England, by the way, all teenagers under the age of 15 are now being told not to go anywhere near a cell phone because of the danger. So uh, you might want to pay attention to that. That story is up on the website as well. Peter Davenport then on uh, Tuesday the 8th, as he is always here on the second Tuesday of the month. Carl Limbacher from Newsmax.com on Wednesday the 9th. And the remarkable Brad Steiger for you folks who keep emailing in saying, can we have Brad Steiger on more? Well, once a month is really about all Brad can, can do. He'll be here on Friday the 11th. And uh, So get your stories ready. If you have a paranormal event or something, you want to discuss it, you can email me the story. We'll try and read it during the program. Or you can call in during the air time, and uh, Brad is here, of course, and tell us about it yourself. All right, we've talked about many things tonight. I think the most important probably is the MTBE contamination issue. That is not a joke. Go into your service station. Some service stations will advertise non-oxy or MTBE-free gasoline. I would urge you to patronize those stations. Look for a sign. Some banners are out, and they'll say non-oxy gas. Those are the ones you want to get. Believe me, don't, uh, don't mess with it. Even the spillage in gas stations, by the way, with MTBE-laced gas, and remember there's one cup of MTBE per gallon, when they spill the gas on the ground, those folks filling their cars up or the attendant, that gas will often run off the tarmac right into the ground, and it seeks water. MTBE has a real affinity for groundwater. For some reason, it goes right to it. So uh, many big problems with that, and that's not a joke, and take it seriously. By the way, if you want to see more about MTBE, you can go to my website and just pull up the search engine. Type in MTBE. There is some extraordinary material there for you. You might want to copy it and give it to your local elected officials and say, hey, how about doing something about this before it destroys our groundwater? Because it will in time. 